Zadiko, seen as one of the weakest killers in Dead by Daylight, had an upbringing during the skill-based matchmaking Boon Circle Feeling meta. Her conventional hit-and-run playstyle had many marking her dead in the water. Everyone thought she needed buffs, and the community cried for Behavior to do something. That was until Behavior revealed he was a killer with one of the highest kill rates in the entire game. November 30th, 2021. Dead by Daylight released their first Crow-inspired killer, The Artist. She was compared to, by many, as a better huntress, with the ability to cross map survivors through walls stemming from the roots of her deadly base kit, this was the much anticipated Crow inspired killer. With a new map and an exciting new playstyle to explore, the success of her release became overshadowed by a disastrous slew of poorly received updates. From the addition of skill based matchmaking, the release of Boon Circle of Healing, killer matches in Dead by Daylight were the most stressful they had been in the entire game's history. With pressure from the community and survivor queue times reaching more than 10 minutes at peak hours, the ever-growing cloud of community dissatisfaction had not gone unnoticed. As an attempt to build excitement for the next upcoming chapter, they decided it was important to announce the upcoming killer three months in advance. Tadako, an iconic Japanese killer from the Ringu franchise, would make her entrance into Dead by Daylight. This once peaceful, asymmetrical game had become a brutal battleground for the bitter Dead by Daylight community. Anticipation began building up as the official release date for the Ringu chapter edged closer and closer. This pressure eventually transformed into desperation. Dead by Daylight's pool of casual killer mains slowly began facing more and more survivors, finishing generators in 5 minutes or less. Two hooks, four gens done. From Boon Circle of Healing, one person ran Boon Circle of Healing. The killer community had been pinned against a wall, and ununanimously, they resorted to doing any means necessary to survive. From always tunneling and camping to playing nurse every match, what new killer ability could Behavior have possibly designed in such a desolate environment? On February 15th, 2022, the community would finally be able to test out Behavior's brand new killer, Onro. As killer mains booted up the public test build, everyone was eager to see what she could do. After a couple hours had passed, a consensus was made on the shortcomings of her design. From getting outpaced by generators to getting out healed by Circle of Healing, it was safe to say the community's expectations had fallen short. After one day of testing Onro's true potential, she was marked as a weak C tier killer. Everyone who tested her couldn't seem to keep enough pressure while playing against the current meta. The community demanded she received a buff. As the community outrage went on, something didn't seem quite right. I downloaded and launched the PTB myself to run my own analysis. 1. She could teleport infinitely across the map with little cooldown. 2. Her condemned stats effect allowed her to murder survivors without hooking them. 3. She had green add-ons to punish survivors for healing. Match after match, I deeply looked into how Sadako was intended to be played. After a handful of careful experiments, her potential seemed insane. Without needing to hook anyone at all, she could just kill everyone, and I honestly couldn't see a world where she was C tier at all. I posted a video on YouTube showing off an experiment with a condemned playstyle at work. Predictably, a handful of skeptics thought I was crazy. People began criticizing how the survivors I faced in the PTB weren't good players, and that Onro was only good with iridescent add-ons. I quickly realized the community discourse had already been set in stone. This herd mentality became the dominant force on Sadako's viability and the opposing opinions were shut down. I was soon labeled as that guy who thought Sadako was better than C tier. I stood my ground and doubled down. After tweeting out my opinions and writing a YouTube comment, I effectively wanted to time capsule my thoughts for future reference. I knew no one had discovered her true potential yet, but in time, someone would. 
After a couple months had passed, major changes in the Dead by Daylight community began shifting into place. Skill based matchmaking was redone, boon totems were nerfed not just once, but twice, the killer base kit was buffed, survivor anti tunneling mechanics were added, and a grand total of 39 perks were reworked. From beneath the rug, issues slowly were lifted, and the shock from pre existing resentment and frustration transformed into skepticism and confusion. These were some of the best updates the Dead by Daylight community had ever seen. The hit and run playstyle began making its comeback, and with this marked the end of the brutal 7 month player count decline streak. Behavior was finally listening. On October 17th, 2022, statistics were released on the kill rates for every killer. Surprisingly, Wesker, Sadako, and Pinhead sat at the top of the pack, with a whopping 63% overall kill rate. While Wesker and Pinhead were expected, almost nobody expected Sadako up there too. I reached out to a Sadako main going by the name of One Pump Willy. With a 100 win streak under his belt, he had paved the road to master Onro's deadly condemned playstyle. I was pretty excited. After waiting a long time, I wanted to see what someone could do when they pushed her to her very limits. After exchanging a couple messages, I asked him if he played a match that was representative of what Sadako truly was capable of. After a bit of contemplation, he sent me an email with four matches he played with her. It seemed her playstyle was extremely complex, and it would do her better justice by sharing the full spectrum of her capabilities. Having endured months of effort learning how to master her, he built up the reputation of being one of the best Sadako players in the entire world. I was ready to take my first dive to see what a true master was truly capable of. It all comes down to this. There's the heartbeat. Does he get hatched though? If he tries to put it away, does he get it off in time? He doesn't! Let's go! Easy! Willy ran a pure generator defense build. Discordance, Overcharge, Colobrine, and Eruption. Not only could he efficiently patrol generators, but he could trap, explode, and regress them 300% faster too. I studied the list he had sent me, and one file name immediately caught my attention. DoubleBrown.mp4 Increase in visibility duration after manifest by 33%, reduce TV turn on duration after projection by 12 seconds. What made these add-ons so special? The match loaded up, and I was eager to see what he could do. Okie dokie, Temple Purgation, and this is a good survivor map, so this will literally be tricky. Spawn over here, they got me in the corner over there, right? No, they spawned close to me. Honestly, that's pretty good. Three people here at least. You wanna give me this pallet for free? Nope, we gotta get the free hit. Jin's over everything. Get over friends. From the looks of it, it seemed he wanted to commit to injuring survivors whilst not actively chasing them down. By controlling generators early, he could guarantee regression by keeping the survivors preoccupied. Didn't. Like. Probably because I did it, dude. Yeah, tea bag. Honestly, I deserve a tea bag. What a good FOV tech. Okay, we can manifest mind game, especially because we have the old newspaper right here. Beautiful. Old newspapers seem to shine at unsafe pallet loops. With the additional 33% invisibility duration, he took advantage of hesitation. Maybe. Just one on this yellow gen. Not dropping shack pallet. You have an E key? Nope. Nice, we get eruption over there. We know no one's working on that gen that they were initially on. Ada's back here. Time for your daily dose of goop. Oh, that newspaper mind game was so good. You have to have an E-key. Invisibility at the window, zero information about where he was headed. That was pretty sick. Oh, hi. Oh, this is a triple goop. This is a triple stack. I could have hit people there, but we need to get as much condemn as possible. Constant pressure from mind gaming survivors, controlling generators, managing condemns. Everything seemed to be a juggling act of making the right move at all times. <laughs> really? You just want to throw Shag Pilot like that at Michaela? I'll take that. You're not injured though, Ada is. Ada's exhausted, she just used Dead Hard. There's no way, unless she has Vigil. Nice, and then we need to go back to the gen all the way over here. Wait, somebody triggered it again? I'm gonna keep it regressing. Everyone's got a fact to condemn, beautiful. 
Immersive survivors cautiously evaded him. With Ada on the ground, he was hoping to gain pressure by forcing the survivors to pick her up. He was going for an all-in play. He had to condemn everyone. Yep, someone's on main. Hello. No sprint burst. Nice. Our TV for Shaq should be coming back fairly soon. We definitely need to go back there. Come on, TV. You need to come back in like five, four, three. Oh, Mikhail's out here. Old cabin sign was an add-on that made TVs turn on 12 seconds faster. Unfortunately, TVs only turned back on after 100 seconds. As an add-on that allowed him to pressure faster, the effects were marginal at best. Mind game Ada here. We know where everyone is. Beautiful, we get eruption. There's two people over here. TV for the condemn. By constantly downing survivors, he could instantly aggress eruption generators by 10%, along with incapacitating anyone repairing by 10 seconds. So much down pressure right here. Another mind game. Beautiful. We can get another eruption. I got auto aimed. The survivors wanted to get their teammates up. In doing so, they could only apply pressure to the shack generator. With eruption constantly exploding their progress, the survivors were forced to play a 2v1. You guys really need to reset. You gotta find a different gen to work on. Oh, what's that unbreakable on that, Michaela? That's where unbreakable gone. Nice, another newspaper mind game. Are you gonna dead hard this? Uh, let's TP back to Shaq. We know that they're greedy for it. Nice, a double stack. The survivor's portraits lighting up were indicative of change in survivor's state or animation. Since both Michaela's portraits started moving, he knew they both gained condemn stacks. I don't think quite yet. Now she is. Nice. Get to sneak up right here. Miss another hit for free. We get a discordance. There's the hit. Ada's picked up a tape. Uh, do we let a gen go for a tape? If he could guarantee Ada's death, giving up the generator may be worth it. To keep pressure from greedy plays, he decided it was best to keep the generator pressure going. Ada did not have that much condemn on her anyways. They've really been trying hard for Shaq. Healing right here, this should be a double stack. The Michaelis have a lot. And she's running to a TV in the middle. Perfect. Another double stack. Here's a heartbeat at five gens with brown add-ons. Let's go. Willie is renowned for his 100 win streaks on Sadako using iridescent videotapes and ring drawings. Although in this match with brown add-ons, he miraculously seemed to make her work. With plays nothing short of perfection, he would get his first Wee. kill. Let's go. You need iridescent videotape and ring drawing to goop people. Oh, and this Michaela's got a tape. I'm just watching though. She's all the way over here. Let's get this kick. And then TP here. Let's go, dude! Oh, she had an insta heal. She's zooming. So they get the first gen done. That's fine. Expected. We gotta commit to this chase and get our kill. After knowing the strength of old newspaper, Michaela panics and gives him his second kill. You are going to die, my good teabagging friend. Wee! Let's go, dude. Zarina's picked up a tape from here. That's why this TV isn't back yet which means that she's putting it away somewhere probably far. Whilst being 16 meters away from the killer with a tape, Zarina passively gained Condemned as time went on. Willie knew her Condemned bar must have been almost ready, though he hunted her down to go for the kill. I don't want her to. They can pop another gen. I want the goop. I want the triple goop, dude. Wee. Triple goop at four gens, double brown add-ons. You die here. We're gonna mind game the Z wall. Nice, dude. That was on a good survivor map. 
with good survivor items. One gen done. Three goops using brown add-ons. Let's go, dude. Most of the critiques about Onro's playstyle is that she's only good with her best add-ons. Hit a survivor after manifesting to turn on the last four TVs turned off by projection, and condemned survivors spread condemnation to those healing them. I finally realized why Willy sent me this match, as the majority of the community seemed to think Sadako was terrible without her best add-ons. We just throw on brown add-ons for one game, I just wanted to demonstrate that it's not add-on reliant. Although Sadako's kill rate sat at the top with Wesker and Pinhead, her kill rate at the top 5% MMR told a different story. In the middle of the pack, she had a kill rate just below the overall average. It was more likely Sadako was a low mid B tier killer. Willy wants to prove a point that Onro stills viable without her best add-ons. You just have to play perfectly. The rest of the matches he sent me were all games with the iridescent videotape and ring drawing equipped. Close game 2.mp4. With how difficult the previous match was, I wanted to see what he could do when he went all out. Okay, let's go. Hmm, let's see, what region do we want? Maybe this one, that one, and that one. Oh, this is a good variation for us. This time his approach was drastically different. With Batam Preschool being a four building god loop, it would call for a three gen setup seconds into the match. Why do I not hear anyone working on a gen? That's lucky. I heard her drop. By hitting a survivor within eight seconds of manifesting, he could bypass the hundred second wait period it took for each TV to turn on. When she heals, I need to delay early gens. Bro, I... Andrew Nancy picked up a tape already. Hold on. Are you moving with him? Check other gens, I know somebody else is a main. Perfect. And that gen was already about to pop. My lord. With two gens already 99, these survivors weren't messing around. You know she wants to go for that gen again. Basically, dude. The strategy to his 3 gen setup was to constantly cycle through a tight vicinity of TVs. In turn, he could turn the school into a massive death trap. I heard somebody breathing on the inside of main. Yes, please take the hit for her and let me reset my TVs. We could get a double stack right here, actually. This is a focus game, for sure. We need to get eruption off of the injured arena. I need to get eruption off this. Jesus. I don't know if she had that hurt or not. I haven't seen their exhaustion. After a solidly executed invisibility mind game, he missed out on an opportunity to down Zarina. Without the eruption proc, the survivors had also chipped away at Willy's 3 gen foundation. A change in plans was necessary. Zarina has a decent chunk of uh, condemned pressure though. I think we might try and focus her with TVs. Nice double eruption. They're very coordinated. As eruption forced the survivors to stop repairing, he had gained the precious seconds he needed to make his comeback. Nice. But they're zoned now? What is that auto aim? That auto aim is so bad. Unbreakable on Zarina though. Fine. We can get more condemn on Zarina. Zarina picked up a tape right here. The TV's aura faded away, and Zarina added her precise location. 117 wins in a row, and the outcome of this match pivoted on whether he could down her or not. Heartbeat. With one generator prop and Zarina fully condemned, 
Willie dropped Chase immediately as the chase was less important. That's weird that she erupted like that. We reset Zarina's TV though. Scratch marks not going. Yes, yes it is. And we broke that pallet from the first TP. You're already upstairs again? Even if Serena gets her tape off, we've already built so much Condemn. We just got a triple stack right there. She puts away one tape, removes three stacks. With that one TP, we built three up. She missed the overcharge, great. Ambulance Jenner was the most regressed Jenner of the whole match. From overcharged skill checks, eruption explosions, to 300% regression speed, I couldn't believe how much pressure he denied. With such a kick-reliant build, it was a miracle. It still was powered. Agreed, Bobby. They are committing way too much to this gen right here. Nice. By forcing Nancy to come rescue her down teammates, he finally maximized Condemned on one of the survivors. Let's f***ing go. Go stop Hexed. I need to regress my gens, not that there's a kill I can't commit to that Nancy. Having survivors slugged on the ground seemed just as powerful as hooking them. A constant cycle of luring teammates in and refreshing TVs was the perfect trap to build Condemn on everybody. Hell yeah, Dusk. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's fine. I have a 3 gen here. You have to dead hard. Yo, GG, dude. <laughs> Sorry, I am like hella focused. You guys are good. With Zerina maxed out on Condemned, Willy knew she was on the other side of the map. The only other threat to popping the last generator was Nancy. Using tapes to delay them now. Oh. Here we go. We can commit to this heartbeat. Are you guys swiping? I think we can get our hook now, right? Please tell me you guys are force stacking because f me. Very well played by you guys. Very well played. I am shaking. <laughs> One Pump Bully as the greatest Omro player in Dead by Daylight had created playstyle revolving around constant generator pressure, manifestation mind games, and using the survivors against each other in an all-out delicate balance of never hooking anybody. After patiently waiting on the sidelines to see what someone could do after they'd mastered her, I could wholeheartedly say that the wait was worth it. Onro gameplay is freaking intense, it's a lot of constant back and forth and back and forth, and One Pup Willie is honestly one of the craziest Onro players I've ever seen. So if you guys want to check him out, his YouTube channel and Twitch are in the description down below. And if you guys liked the video or learned something from it, feel free to leave a like or a sub down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this story of how one of the weakest killers in Dead by Daylight rose to become one of the greats. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it.